In this video, I'm going to show you how to successfully set up and produce a Microsoft Teams live event. If you're new to this channel, my name is Harry Loughton. I'm a technology strategist for Microsoft. And the goal here is to really teach you technology. So if you've been a Microsoft Teams user for a while, you're probably quite familiar with Teams meetings. This allows a few hundred people to join a meeting and share their audio, their video, any kind of content like PowerPoint, for example. But you might not be as familiar with Microsoft Teams live events. And live events really allows you to broadcast to thousands of people at the same time. And then the audience can then engage with the presenters in a Q&A format. This is fantastic for company-wide town halls or large training, or if you're in education, being able to broadcast out to all of your students. So I'm gonna show us all the way from the setup side to how to produce and all the way at looking at how the attendees see a live event. Right, well, let's dive into Microsoft Teams and get started. Alrighty, so we're now here inside Microsoft Teams and let's go ahead and organize this live event. So I'm under calendar and what you need to do is go to the top right hand side where you see new meeting, drop that arrow down and then choose live event. From here, you can put in all the key information about what is this event all about and then you can add in your presenters and your producers of this live event. So in my case, this is gonna be a Microsoft Teams training event. I'm gonna leave the location as blank and then start time, I'm just gonna move that to 3 p.m. for example. And then in details, I'm just gonna let everyone know what this training is all about. Then from the right hand side, we can add in those producers and presenters. So for example, I can put Megan Bowen here, and then under this event group, I can choose, is she a producer or is she a presenter? So a producer, as you'd imagine, they have kind of the full rights to be able to start the event, end the event, choose what all the attendees are seeing on the screen, and of course, moderate Q&A. And then the presenters, they can just present their screen themselves, their voice, you know, all that kind of jazz. Uh, they can also interact in the Q&A, but they can't choose what's coming up next and they can't end or start the event. So for Megan, let's just make her a presenter. And in my case, I'm just gonna be the producer. And then let's go ahead and hit next. Next up, we need to choose the live event permissions. So for example, you could do people and groups, which allows you to select certain people or groups that are going to be able to watch your live event. Or you can do organizational wide, so anybody that can sign into your organization has this link is going to be able to watch your live event or you can do public. This allows people from inside your organization or outside your organization to watch this event without having to sign in. Next up, we have a couple of production options for live events. So by default, your recording is going to be available for producers and presenters. You can choose whether or not recordings are going to be available to all attendees after the event as well. You then have captions. You can choose whether or not you want to change United States up to six other languages. So you, know, you can choose that if it makes sense for your organization. I'm then going to enable and keep enabled the attendee engagement report. I want to see who's engaging within this live event. In this case, it's a training. It's going to be important to see that kind of info. And then we want to choose whether or not we want a Q&A. And I'm going to choose a Q&A here as well. All right, so that's really all there is to hear. When you've not set up for any kind of external apps, this might be if you're wanting to add some more production value using things like OBS. But for this, we're just going to leave that out and do that probably in another training. And at the bottom here, if you have a support link, you could give that out. So if somebody's having trouble with this live event, you could link them to your service desk for them to then raise a ticket and get help, for example. So now we've done that, all we need to do is go ahead and hit schedule. With this new event scheduled, you've got a few things that you can do now. So first of all, we got the attendee link. Here you can copy that. You could send it by email to your attendees or you could create a whole new calendar invite and send it out or you, know, you can just copy it into a, a Teams message as well. So there's a whole host of ways that you can get this link out there, but you are gonna need your attendees to view this event via that link. You know, if you're the producer or the presenter, you can just join it as if it was a normal kind of Teams meeting. And we'll look later on at some of these other things here, like these live event resources as we go down. And of course, if you weren't happy with this meeting, you could cancel it as well. And 
you could edit it if there's something that you missed. So we're just gonna go ahead and do close. So now that we have the live event scheduled, let's go ahead and join it as a producer. So I'm gonna go back into our Microsoft Teams training. Um, I'm actually gonna copy the attendee link because I'm gonna use that a little bit later on. But for now, we're just gonna join it like you would join any other Teams meeting. And then we can notice here, look, we're joining it. It looks similar to a, a, to a normal Teams meeting, but we can see here we're joining as a producer gives us the option to do our normal things, have our video on, have our microphone on, so on and so forth. We're just gonna do join now. So now we're in the producer user interface of Teams and there's quite a few things we can do here. So I'm gonna walk us through it and then we're gonna join another kind of presenter and then we're gonna look at how the attendee looks as well. So first thing you'll note is you can see the elapsed time of this actual live event. We can see the amount of attendees when people join that will of course go up. And we can see that we're in this pre-live mode. So right now, none of the attendees, if they had you know, the link to join, would be seeing anything. They wouldn't be seeing any form of content. And this is where the next two parts come into play. So we've got this left looking screen and right screen here. So on the right is the live event. So this is everything that the attendees are seeing. So right now it should be showing to them that the live event hasn't started and then on the left hand side, we've got the queue. So this is where we can queue up content that we wanna display next on this live event. So live event, everything that's happening live on the right, everything you're queuing up to come into live is, is gonna be next. So at this point, we could go ahead as a producer, if it's just one of us, we could go ahead and start adding content. So for example, you know, I've just got myself at the bottom here, but I could click myself and now I'm in the queue. So at this point, you know, I can do any more tweaks that I want. And if I'm happy, I could send it live. And then if this event was actually live, people would be able to see it. The other option that we've got here is I can also share content. So I could go to share and then, you know, on the left hand side, similar to a Teams meeting, I've got my desktops and the right hand side, I got my windows. So. I'm actually gonna bring in this Microsoft Teams training PowerPoint. And uh, that's gonna load up on my other screen, but let's just bring Teams back again. And now at the bottom here, we can see we got my video that we already saw and we've got my desktop. So now I could go ahead and hit my desktop and it's gonna replace me with that PowerPoint. You can also, you've got over on the left-hand side here, you've got single source. That's just either the PowerPoint or my face, for example. And we've also got content left. So now we can do this. And if I wanted to, I could hit add video and then choose my face. So now we've got the content playing on the left-hand side, and then you'll be able to see me interacting at the same time. You know, in a live event that makes it really nice and, and interactive. Or I could just go back to the one source again and we'll have you know, our PowerPoint. At this point, you know, if I was happy with this, I could do send live, and that's gonna get us ready for when we actually start this live event, this is what all the attendees are gonna be seeing. So that's kind of the main kind of key production area. On the top right though, we do have some more things that you as a producer can see. So first of all, we've kind of got the health and performance. So you can see the network performance, device performance, so on and so forth. After that, we've got the Q&A. So when people start asking questions, we'll be able to respond here or publish them. You'll also be able to see any notes that would be accessible after the meeting as well that you might wanna make throughout it. And then you have a chat, and this chat is only able to be seen from the presenters and the producers. So anyone that's attending won't be able to see this. So you can have your internal conversations to say, hey, you know, Megan, you're up next to make sure you're you know, ready to present and all that kind of stuff. And then we have the ability to add more people. So, you know, right now we, you know, we've got the link that we can send to all of our attendees. But if we want to add any more presenters or producers, we could do that here. So, for example, I could type in Alex, add Alex in, and now it will try and dial him in as a presenter within this uh, live event. Next up, we have the settings. And this again, should look pretty familiar to a, a normal meeting. So you know, at the top here, we can do our devices. So what's my speaker? What's my microphone? What's my camera? 
We then have a couple of options, auditorium mode. In this case, we won't worry about it too much, but if you're in a large event, you might need to optimize for that. And then we got live captions. So when I'm speaking, do I want to see my own live captions showing up? And then do we want to allow live captions for our attendees? And really that's all the settings up here. And we'll look at a little bit more later on. Most of the questions I now see from a lot of people is you know, how do we work with multiple presenters or producers? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually, before we go live, and this is key, we're still in pre-live right now. Attendees won't be able to see anything. So you know, we can see that if I go over, let's bring up a, a Chrome browser and we're sign in as if we're an attendee. So you know, I'm just going to cancel this and we'll look at it on the web. So we're coming in right now as an attendee. So now we're in as an attendee. We can see here quite clearly, it still says that the live event hasn't started. So even though I did share my PowerPoint to be in the live section as a producer, I haven't actually started the meeting yet. So this is all they can see. However, on the right hand side, they can still engage with the Q&A. So you can see you've got featured, you've got my questions, and at the bottom here as an attendee, you could ask a question. So for example, I could just do ask a question, let's say, you know, looking forward to the training, when is it starting? And I'm just gonna post this you know, as anonymous. So let's go ahead and just send that and we'll see that later on as a presenter or a producer as well. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're now as one of the presenters. So I'm now logged in as, as Megan, who we earlier said is gonna be one of our presenters. And we have the Teams meeting here again, you know, one, we can see it's live because of the, the video camera. Two, we can see it's a live event because it's icon and none of the other meetings in there have that because they're not a live event. So let's go ahead and uh, open this up and join the meeting. So let's just hit join here. And with Megan, I'm not gonna bring any video or camera in. I'm just gonna do join. As Megan is the presenter, she's actually seeing what's gonna go live. So at the moment she could see that that PowerPoint saying Teams training starting soon, that's what would go live if we weren't there. But she's still easily able to see that it's in pre-live. So she knows that whatever she does isn't going to be broadcasted to everyone, which is great. You can also see she can share and the Q&A is here as well, which is good to see. So before the meeting actually starts or this event actually starts, what I'm going to do is share some content. So from Megan, I'm going to share this Teams PowerPoint and that's now going to load up and share from her side. And this is interesting because if we now go back to myself as the uh, as the producer, what we can now see is that we've got, you know, Megan is trying to share, so she's taken over to share her screen, and we've got her content down at the bottom here as well, and we also can see Megan as a presenter. So again, I could still mess around with this, so I could put myself, you know, as queued up, you know, I could send that live, and that would be me now over on the right hand side. You know, and then I could bring Megan's content back as well. And really that gives you a good kind of grips of what you can do with being a presenter and a producer as well. And as they asked a question on the top right hand side here, we've got that Q&A, you know, looking forward to training. I could dismiss it or I could publish it. So if I published it, you know, now everyone will see this question and I could put back, you know, starting soon or whatever. And then if we went back to the attendee, we can now see the question has been asked or the question has been asked and I've responded to it saying starting soon. So once you're happy and you're ready with your production, you can just go ahead and hit start. So let's just do that. And it's gonna give you a quick message just saying, okay, once you start this live event, you can't stop it. So, you know, be ready to go. And there's gonna be a little bit of a delay. So the users are gonna see, or the attendees are gonna see it 10 to 20 seconds after you've done it. So let's go ahead and hit continue. And now we can see that the event is actually live. So we got one attendee, it's live. The screen is being shared over here is now gone red and I can end it, which would end the live event for everyone. If I go back, let's see from, from Megan's side of the house, it's now everything is red and you know, we are rolling. And then from the attendee, we can see here that the meeting has started. So everything is happening live now within this meeting. And that is all there is to it. You know, of course I could go back to the producer side and then send myself live. 
and this is now going to take over what Megan is presenting and it's going to show myself. So if we go back over to the attendee, shortly, as I said, because it's got a 10 to 20 second delay, shortly they're going to see me pop up in here and everything that I <laughs> would have just said in this, in this chat here will be displaying. And then when you're done with the meeting, we can just go ahead and, and hit end. And that's going to now tell you, look, if you stop the meeting, you can't start it again. So make sure that you really want to end it. You know, you're not leaving it right now. You're ending this live event for everyone. Okay. And now the live event has ended. We went over to look at it from an attendee point of view. We can clearly now see that the live event has ended, but because it's been recorded in the background, yeah, I could actually scroll back and rewatch anything. So that's pretty interesting to be able to do as well in case you join late or whatever it might be. Maybe you missed something. Okay, so let's go back to the producer side of the house. I'm now going to leave this meeting. You know, we're done here. Dismiss this. And what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go back to the calendar and I'm going to open this meeting back up again because what we mentioned is that there were some kind of artifacts that are going to come in after the event. And this is it. So we can see here we've got the recording we could download. We've got the Q&A report that we can download. And we can also download the engagement report as well. So all these reports are here for you. You can download the transcript and so on and so forth. And there we have it. That's all it is to schedule a live event. Make sure you know... You know, who are you sending this live event to? Is it going to be to people and to groups, organization-wide or public? And then you can easily, from Teams, produce your live event. In this video, I didn't go through anything more complex of adding in you know, third-party companies and programs like OBS to make a more professional-looking live event. We'll talk about that in another video. But for now, hopefully you enjoyed this and learned something. I'll put some links in the description to more guidance and training. So make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week for another video.